All right, welcome in everybody. Got another episode coming at you right now. I got my boy Shane Paris with us. Shane just flew in. Well, some people don't even know him that are watching. Shane's my boy. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I just love him so much. But we just got done. He flew in from uh, Virginia. We flew in from Hawaii. We're in Missouri right now, hence the scenery. Not very Hawaiian. Um, I guess these flowers kind of look Hawaiian a little bit. But um, but anyway, Shane came in because we were ministering a lot this weekend. We uh, had our Chain Breakers, our first annual Chain Breakers event on Saturday. and went. Re- it just went amazing. It was so good. God moved. We ad- We ended up getting rained out. So we were at the amphitheater. We had been putting like two years of planning into having this thing at the amphitheater. Shane flew in. My boy Brian flew in from Portland. We had um, all the speakers lined up, the music lined up. Everything was set up. And then heaven just opened up. (laughs) And it just started raining, lightning, like one of the biggest storms you've seen, you know, for people that aren't from the Midwest. It was like, it was huge. It had to happen, though. It had to happen. So what ended up happening was... We get rained out. They can't. The city canceled the event, um, not because of rain, but because the lightning was so bad. And so there had already been some people that arrived. So we were supposed to start at 12 p.m. Now it's about 12:30. They call it out. Um, there are some people that had moved up under this pavilion area, and um, and so we go up there. I, um, me, Shane, and Brian kind of walk up there. We're kind of game planning. Connie's there, and we're like, "Hey, what are we gonna do?" And we're like, "Hey, let's just move everything up here, and we'll just set up a little acoustic set with music." So I kind of made an announcement, let everybody know, "Hey, the show's still on. Don't leave. Just come underneath the pavilion." There's maybe I don't know, maybe 40 people there at the beginning, maybe less. Um, but what happened, guys? This is what's really cool. There is human expectations over this event. There is human expectations. People were talking about four or five hundred people, thousands of people showing up, getting touched, like men, men from all over, like getting impacted by God. And, and yeah, that would have been mighty. That would have been great. But the thing about the amphitheater is the stage was about five feet high tall. Yeah. And that would have elevated the leaders and the singers and the preachers to where they were above the audience. A disconnect, mm-hmm. yeah. And they were speaking down, they would have been speaking down to the audience in a way. And the vision that I had for this event was moving amongst the crowd, moving amongst the crowd, touching people, people laying hands, people getting radically changed. And my mother-in-law just had a, had a word this morning that God bestowed upon her, how God moves in unexpected ways. He moves in unexpected ways. And so we've been manicured to think that God looks a certain way, that this is how church looks. This is how church should look. This is how church functions look. And so when we go into a, a function and it doesn't look the way we expect, we instantly have judgment that comes up. Yeah. Or maybe we've seen a way that God actually does, but people have misused it. And so we put up a hesitate. We immediately are hesitant and say, oh, this, this is something weird. I've heard about people like this. I've heard about this. He's always unexpected. He's born in a manger. They were expecting it, yep. In a barn. Stinky, nasty barn. He was expected to be a king. A king of the physical realm. To rule over the Greeks and the Romans, you know, to push them out. Yep. But what did he do? He came to set the captives free. He came to establish his dominion. He came to give us authority in the spiritual realm because it's not a battle of flesh and blood, but that of rulers, authorities, cosmic powers of this present darkness. Spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That's what it's about. And so what happened on Saturday night was so special. It was such a mighty move of God. It was a mighty move of God, the mightiest move of God that I had been a part of because of the impact, not in the life change, not because of how many people were there. I've seen greater crowds. I've seen people speaking in tongues all over the place. I've seen, but people got delivered People got set free. People got healed. Unity was made. There's bonds that were forged that night that will go on into eternity. There's moves of God that are going to come out of the experience that happened that night that are going to go on. And I know that to be true because the spirit of prophecy was so heavy on the place. My boy Brian brought it. He had the most specific words. He had a word for my niece It was so heavy, guys. I was standing across the room. I was praying for someone, and all of a sudden, I just felt this tug, and I just felt, oh, my goodness, the Holy Spirit is moving so mightily. I looked over, and I saw my niece, 
and everyone in the place almost it seemed like had their hands on her were stretched out towards her and Brian was bringing a word and he didn't even know her and he said everything that she had been through and everything that she had walked through and everything she was being called into and so I know some there's some people that get hesitant about even prophecy they get hesitant about prophecy prophecy is littered through the Bible and there's prophets in the New Testament So prophecy is here, guys, and if you're not used to it, if you're not used to it, then you're used to things that aren't from God, because in here, it's here. It's here. And I'm experiencing it. I'm feeling it. I'm even feeling like I'm even feeling it now. You know what I'm saying? Like where where you just it's something that the spirit just comes over you and he gives you a knowledge and he gives you understanding and he tells you what to produce and what to bring forward. And then that is the word of God coming from you. It's not this word of God, right? We have, the problem is this gets translated. Here's where the enemy gets us, our English language. He really jacks it up. He really jacks it up. He tells us the word, that word gets translated one time, but God spoke through people. God spoke audibly. God also spoke in writing. They have different words. They have graphite, rama, but it all gets translated as word to us in English. So then we say, hey, this is a word from God. And people are like, oh, you're saying what you're getting in your brain is lining up with this or is as just as authoritative as this? Well, that's up to you to decipher. All that I'm saying is that God gave me a message and I'm bringing it forward. And how you want to take that, that's up to you. I, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? I'll be held accountable. I'll stand before the judge one day. And, he'll, and I'll have to say, yeah, God, that, was for, that word was from you. That's a lot to carry. It's a lot for a prophet to carry. You know what I mean? Like that's a heavy burden. And then you get attacked from people of people saying, oh, this. So uh, what I'm saying here, guys, is like the things that you're used to, you got to throw them aside. You got to throw them aside because there's something different coming for you. There's something heavier coming for you. He wants to set you free. He wants to. Yeah, man. So I just had to get that off my chest a little bit because that's what God was speaking to me this morning. God was speaking from that to me this morning, so I had to produce it. I had to bring it forth. It was, it's my duty. It's my obligation to give you that message, and so I've given it to you. And now we're going to get more into a conversation. I'm sorry, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I just had you sitting over sorry. here, bro. Don't Woo. be sorry, I had to get man. that off. I was, uh, I was receiving. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think what our culture, yeah, our culture here in the West, here in the, the Western part of the world, has uh, has kind of mess things up for us going yeah. to church on Sunday, maybe Sunday night, maybe Wednesday night if right. you're a real Christian. You yeah. Know what I mean, well, real Christians go on Saturday, seven day Adventist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, but that, that's to say to even, even to the people that go to church a few days a week to, to sing these songs that say our God is so mighty and powerful, but then to say he's only contained to speaking through the word. How can you say it that? It kind of contradicts each other. Say you know? that, bro. Yeah. So, no, I think you're spot on, man. And I think, uh, regardless of how, and uh, dude, I said this from the beginning. When I came into the picture, I was hoping it wouldn't be this large production. Mm. I've been a part of the large productions. Mm. And my wife, Sydney, and I have really been broken down over the last few years um, and have really had a, a bigger heart for being a part of a community. Um, a, not just a smaller base community, but I'd say a more intimate community. Yes, yes. And um, so I've said from the beginning, a lot of the leaders, a lot of the older gentlemen that, that put this on from the beginning that you were working with, I told them, man, I said, I don't care if one person gets impacted from mm-hmm. this event. It was worth it. People say that, bro, and they don't actually mean it. And let me tell you the place of humility that this man is coming from. Because if you don't know what we're talking about, basically we, we had been planning this event, Chain Breakers, and it's supposed to be this big event, Carney Amphitheater, rented out, two years in the p- making, like flyers everywhere, you know, posters everywhere, advertisement, like wanting to just like send it, full send it, because we wanted people to get impacted. But him, him from the beginning, he actually didn't want to be involved if it was big. Whenever we were printing out the flyers and we were putting the names of the speakers on it in their picture, he, he said, I'm not going to send you a picture of me. I don't want my picture on there. I don't want there to be the risk of the devil gaining a foothold of me thinking that this is a shame thing yeah. instead of a God thing. And so he put himself in a position to be used, and God used him in such a mighty way Saturday, such a mighty way because of his position. And, and it's, not, it, it's not to brag on him, it was all because of Christ. Christ made it available to him. But what he, we all have a choice. And he made the choice of stripping himself so that he could be used. He got rid of his pride. 
he got humbled. He went through a very humbling season yeah. to get there, to get to that place. Yeah, no, you're spot on. That's uh, that's what it was about, and that's what happened. Yeah. That's what happened. Even if this event, and this might contradict a lot of the people that were involved in planning it, but even if this event was an opportunity for you to come home and have an impact on your friends and family, because, yeah. dude, your family's huge. Yeah. I think you've got, like, 500 cousins, yeah. <laughs> 16 <laughs> brothers and sisters, um, aunts and uncles. But even if it was to come home and have an impact on your family and a lot of the people that you went to school with growing mm-hmm. up, um, if this was the only way that you could reach them, then I think that God moved in that manner. Bro, why not? I mean, I would love that. Ultimately, you want to have the people close to you impacted. Mm-hmm. You want to have them change. And that's, that was my prayer leading in the event. I, Cause God would give me visions of these people. Like, um, my boy, my boy, Ted, that showed up, um, we were, we were friends back in high school and then we didn't talk for like 10 years. And then God just started to bring him to mind so heavily, so heavily through just visions. And, and he was just, God was just speaking to me about Ted, that he had a, a specific call on his life and that he was going to, and he was going to use him and he was going to use his wife and he was going to use his family. And, um, and what's crazy is, so I saw Ted there and it was maybe the first time we saw each other in 12 years. And I went up to him after and I was, and I was talking to him and he said, what's crazy is that he started to have the same feeling about me at the same time that I was getting. And he started to look at my, he started to look at my Instagram page more and kind of like, you know, look. And so, cause I had reached out to him and invited him and I'm like, Hey man, this might be sound weird, but I know God's doing something. Like, I can't say a lot. I can't give you all the, pr- cause sometimes like. Sometimes prophecy, it, it, um, it takes a while to work out, yeah. you know, like we always want everything instantaneously. Um, we want to know, okay, if God's speaking, what is he saying? What is he saying? But that's not always how he works. Sometimes it's like pieces that come together and Indy's very good at it because like she'll get a dream and she won't even try to solve the dream right away. She'll just let God speak to her throughout the week. She had this one real weird one about like some, uh, some ice bass and these like horse troughs and whatnot. And um, she had to wait, like she brought it up to me and was all excited. And I'm like, Indy, this is weird. I don't know what to do with this. Like I it, I was like, I thought she was wanting me to start like an ice bath business or something. <laughs> I was like, chill out. And it took her like three months, bro, to actually like have the full development of what it was. And then when it, when it was bestowed upon her, it was so powerful. And so these are the ways God moves. Yeah. These are the ways God's, God moves, in unexpected ways, not in the way that you're used to it. So if the way, if, if, if how you're used to it is, is making you feel like you don't have enough, or God isn't there, or God isn't speaking, then I would challenge you to potentially have a paradigm shift. To ask yourself, do I need to change the way that I'm viewing God and thinking about God? That's it right there. And I know that we've, there's an objective behind this. There's an objective behind why we're, we're in front of this right. camera right now, and it's really um, geared around that next step for people that came to this event. But that is another uh, – something that's happened culturally with, you know, the, the Western part of society, the Western part of the world, the United States of America to be exact, is everybody wants to hear from God. Everybody – even non-believers, there's times in their life where they are, you know, all right, if God's so real, you know, I'm, I'm in this situation, I've got these circumstances going on, talk to me, God. Yet, we have so many distractions in our life because of where we live, there's so many things thrown at us. We could pray for God to speak and then pick up our phone and scroll social wow. media. Yeah. We're not going to hear him. Yep. We can pray for God to speak and then turn on CNN or Fox News and get infiltrated wow. with divisiveness, yep. and we're not going to hear them. Yep. So one thing that, that I've been taught or one thing that I've learned over the, you know, over the course of time is, one, it takes faith to hear God. It, it, it takes a certain type of faith to hear God when you want to hear from yeah, God. But to hear from God, it usually takes a level of sacrifice wow. before you find that success. Whether you're sacrificing selfishness within, whether you're sacrificing um, some bitterness that you've been carrying wow, within, bro. Um, your lusts. And, and for me, a big one was shame. Mm. You've, you've got to, in order to hear from God, wow. you've got to clear some space to receive that feeling from the Holy Spirit too. And um, 
and and it's hard in the day and age we live in because we have so many distractions and so many things we can cut the music up mm. when we need to be in quiet or we can uh you know like i said social media is a big one right now and um it's tough oh my it's tough that was oh oh my gosh bro <laughs> You think I'm exaggerating, but you don't understand. I'm just feeling that so heavily right now. I know that was for some people out there. Whew. If you guys felt that, if you guys felt that, I'm not trying to be weird. I'm not trying, I'm not a, I am a weirdo. I'm not, but I'm not trying to be weird. But I'm just saying, when he was saying that, oh my gosh, the spirit was moving so mightily over me. I just felt it and I know. It. So if you felt that, that's God trying to speak to you in this moment. And that's how he speaks because you cleared out distractions. Yeah. Everything's out right now. You're watching this video. You're looking at this video. So there's nothing else going on in your mind except this video. And, and so, if there is, silence it right now. Yeah. <laughs> if there is, silence it right, right now. And so what happened was you cleared out all the noise because if you were watching TV while you were watching this video, you wouldn't have heard what Shane just said. So you cleared out the noise. And so God just used Shane to speak to you. And if you're going to argue that he can't use people to speak to you, then we're talking about a different God. Because he used, this was people. Yeah. This was people. And I love the word of God. I love the Bible, but I do not idolize it. it the Bible can become an idol to you. You can get so, you know what it was to the Pharisees? You know what the Tanakh was to the Pharisees? The Tanakh of the Old Covenant was to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It was an idol. And there's some Christians out here that have made this an idol. Yeah. And so they're missing God's movement because this isn't an idol. So ask yourself, is it an idol? Are you willing to receive that word from Shane just there? Or do you have a hesitation when I say that God was just speaking through him as a vessel to you? You know what I'm saying? If that, if that ruffles your feathers and that gets you uncomfortable, then we're talking about a different God. Because the God that I'm talking about, he speaks. Mm -hmm. He speaks. He speaks, and if he's not speaking to you, then just like Shane has said, you got some things in your life that you need to declutter. Th these phones, man, these phones, we carry them in our pocket. You know, Elon Musk, he said it's the same as AI. When, when he was talking to Joe Rogan in that podcast, Joe Rogan's like kind of was all hesitant about the microchip and being like, oh, I don't know if I like. And, and uh, Elon's like, you already, you already might as well have it microchip because you carry this thing around. You, you oh, yeah. leave the house without it. He's like, this is a piece of you. You don't even go to the bathroom with that no. thing. Yeah. He's like, this is a piece of you. It is with you everywhere you go, so why not get a microchip? And you got Christians out here being like, oh, don't get the microchip. Don't get it. No, Mark of the beast. You're, chi <laughs> you're, you're chipped. You're chipped, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the chip wasn't no COVID vaccine. <laughs> oh, dang it. I shouldn't. Is I going to get his flag on here? I don't know how that works. <laughs> saying, I don't know if you're allowed to say the C word. Okay, stupid. We're dumb. We get... <laughs> All right, but we're here, guys. We're here. We just went on a tangent, but we're here to talk about this event that we had. Mm -hmm. This event that we had, some people got impacted, man. They got There were some people that got baptized in the Holy Spirit for the first time. And if you don't know what that means, that means it can be separate from your physical water baptism. It can happen at the same time. Because sometimes people get physically baptized, but then they're carrying too much noise, like you were talking about, Shane. Yeah. They're carrying too much, where they, they still haven't, um, there hasn't been a path for the Holy Spirit to completely consume them and take over yet. And so what needs to happen is they have to kind of clear some space and whatnot, or get around some people that have the Holy Spirit, lay hands on them. Because what happened in Acts, there was a specific moment where I think it was Peter, he had to go to the, I believe the Ethiopians, because they, they believed they had been water baptized, but they hadn't received the Holy Spirit yet. And so he had to go there and he had to actually bring the Holy Spirit to them. Okay, and I know that's confusing because it's like, oh, well, once, once you're saved, don't you receive the Holy Spirit? And there, we could get all into that, but all, all I'm saying is that there, there's a difference when you are overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit and then you carry that with you. There's something that happens, and that happened to you recently. Yeah, yeah. And you had been in church for a minute. Yeah. So Since. just give us like a brief synopsis of what, what went down. So a lot of people that are watching don't know know my story, know our family's story. Um Sydney and I have been consistently in church since 2012. Yeah. Um, she grew up in church as a kid. Yeah. I did for a, for a little bit. Um, but long story short, we were never really in an environment where um, we talked about these things. You know, it was 
it was community. It was prayer. We talked some on the Holy Spirit, but we didn't really know how to um, utilize the Holy Spirit like Jesus said, utilize the Holy Spirit right. when he left. Yeah. You know, he said, it's better if I leave because right. I'm going to give you a helper. Yep. Individually, you will receive a helper. Yep. And um, we don't know how to utilize that help. Yeah. So do just a few months back, we went to an event at our church back home in Richmond, Virginia, Hope Point Church. And we got to receive the Holy Spirit that wow. night. We were baptized by the Holy Spirit that night. And what came from that was, uh, it wasn't just a high. Yeah. You know, we mm. actually, we sacrificed some things yeah. in our life. We had some really tough conversations. And in doing so, it has completely created some space for the Holy Spirit to move and allow us to really begin to learn what it means to utilize mm -hmm. the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But what I'll say is the reason why this video is going to be so impactful or should be so impactful was because after that night, uh, that next day, dude, I felt like a stirring inside mm. of me that I didn't know what to do with. Wow. I was, I felt anxious I came home from work and I told Sydney and I was like, I, I don't know what's going on right now, but the enemy was fighting for something, you. Something's going on yeah. inside of me and I don't know what to do mm -hmm. next. So I called you up. Mm -hmm. I was like, Brennan, you know, actually I called you first and you didn't answer. I was like, crap. <laughs> yeah, you had to sit for a second. Yeah, I had to you, sit you, in you it, You were pulled man. over right in your truck. Yeah, I had to sit in it. And um, you were supposed to be shooting a podcast and long story short, it got delayed. So you called me back, and you're like, hey, man, what's up? And I was like, dude, I don't know what's going on. This is how I'm feeling. But um, I need I need some prayer, some specific prayer right now. And uh, and we dove right into yeah. that, man, uh, some repentance, yeah. um, some, some oh, deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and after that, I literally felt like the weight mm. of what I was feeling release. And, um, dude, it hasn't been – I'm not going to sit here and say, like, that happened and woo. My life was perfect because it's like you said the other night, if it was, we'd be all walking around like robots mm -hmm. and we wouldn't need God. Right. Um, but the the purpose behind shooting a video like this, regardless if you are at the chain breaker event this Saturday or whether you received a good word at church yeah. yesterday from your pastor or or if you were a part of an event or anything that had an impact on you and now you're like, okay, what's next? Mm. Um, I needed that. And I've been in church wow. for a majority of my life. Yeah. So I know there were some people at the event the other night that were impacted, mm. that were delivered from some things. Mm. And now they are just questioning, what do I do now? Mm. And that's what, that's what we need to discuss. I feel like. I just got a word, man. When you were saying that, um, well, first off, I want to say, because I know I know some people might be like, oh, utilize the Holy Spirit. We don't utilize the Holy Spirit. We submit to the Holy Spirit. And he, he, was, say, he was saying, utilize the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We don't allow the Holy Spirit to come and actually show us and move us and speak through us and use us. We don't allow that to happen. We don't utilize that relationship. Yes. We don't create that yes. relationship and utilize mm -hmm. the support that we need to right. on a daily basis. Yep, and when you were saying, and this is part of this, when you were saying that, bro, I felt so heavily that the enemy has labeled any restlessness in us as anxiety. Mm. And yeah. so then we think that we have anxiety. What Shane was feeling in his truck was not anxiety. It was conviction. Mm. He was feeling conviction. He was feeling a stirring going on in his soul. Yeah. That there's some things that need to be let go. And he had a choice there. He could have went and medicated to the world. He could have went. He could have went to a bar. He could have pulled over into a bar and taken a couple of drinks, and then he would have been fine because he would have numbed his demons. Yeah. But he had some demons wrestling. He had his flesh wrestling. He has some things wrestling with inside of him, and it's not anxiety. Anxiety is a spirit. You can get overcome by anxiety, but you can also overcome anxiety where you do not deal with it anymore, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit. So the enemy has lied to us and he has told us that that restlessness is anxiety and we just need to medicate or solve our anxiety when in reality, that restlessness is conviction and we need to repent and bring ourselves back under his umbrella, back underneath his will, and then we will not feel conviction anymore because we will be living a holy set apart life. Yeah, you're right. 
because I'm glad you said that because I actually got rid of some of the medications that I was using to medicate myself daily with um, um, that next day. So I believe it was conviction. You know, it was a stirring of there, there's some there's some next steps that we you, you can't just go through that and then wake up the next day and continue to do what you've been doing. Right. You know, right. There, there's got there's a process. And and yes, that's so good, because what, what I'm saying, I'm not I'm not speaking of legalism. Like there's all these like hard lines of like, oh, well, no, people don't experience. Obviously, there's post-traumatic stress syndrome. Yeah. If you there, I mean, there are some there are some people at this event that literally have PTSD that they someone took the place of them in war and got blown up. Yeah. That's something that he has to live with. That's something so heavy that causes traumatic stress that causes anxiety, but Jesus wants to come in and heal that. What we've told everyone is that they can overcome it, that they can overcome it, that it's within their own power to over. You can't overcome that. There's no amount of drugs in the world. There's no ayahuasca trips or hallucinogenics or mindfulness culture. There, there's nothing that you can do to overcome that. Except the name of Jesus. No, you're just sedating it for a little bit at that point. You're just sedating it, and then it's just going to come right back up, and then we yes. sedate it again. Yes. You know, it's like, what, what did Brian say the other day? Our, our, our desire to, um, what did he say? Our desire to gratify what we need temporarily has an impact. Mm, yeah on what we need to receive righteousness. Mm. Or I wish I could, I wish yeah. I could spit it out, dude. I he's know a I've wordsmith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something. Oh, it's in my phone. I don't have. My oh, phone shoot. Right oh, now. well, I got what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. He Break said, that down for a second. So we have an appetite for something. And because we have an appetite, we have an appetite for, we all want to live a good life. We all want to be good people. Yeah. We all want to pass this down to our children as well. But what we do in the meantime is we might find weed or drugs mm. or cigarettes or, or we might vape or we might find porn or alcohol. In the meantime, to make us feel better, we're willing to sacrifice what our appetite is actually craving, which is righteousness. Mm. But we do it for something that will only, we, we grab something that will only help temporarily. That doesn't really help. What's righteousness mean to you? Like, how would you explain that to a layman that maybe hasn't heard that? I would, I would say that, well, what I've experienced is righteousness is, uh, is living a life that's, that's right with God. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I'm not saying perfection. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying perfection because we're all going to stumble. We're all going to mess up. Yeah. We're all going to sin. We're all going to fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. But when you stumble, when you fail, there's a repentance process. There's conviction. You know, not shame. You're not carrying shame because shame's going to keep you there. Yeah. But it's God. I screwed up. I messed yeah. up in this. You know, you, you talk to your spouse. I screwed up. I messed up in this. Or your friends. Get them. Um, I messed up in this. And, uh, but then you move forward from that. Mm -hmm. So I think just finding that, that, that it, life that's right with God. You don't continue to mess up in the same way though i think that's what's right. confusing i think people there you can either overemphasize grace or you can overemphasize sanctification and neither of those camps are right so there's people out here that are like oh no you're fine in your sin like we're never going to be perfect like it's okay that you mess up you get what i'm saying yeah and then there's another camp that said that overemphasizes sanctification and think that sanctification is possible on our own will that we're trying to be better yeah, and you can't do that. Sanctification and holiness have the same word. They're the same word in the New Testament, hagios, which mean, which is also the same as consecration. And so all that you're doing is you're setting yourself apart. You're, you're stripping away layers. You're being pruned by God. And as you continue to do that, as you grow, you become more and more like Jesus. You don't try to be sanctified. You don't try to be holy. You just strip the things of the world away, and as you do that, you sin less and less. Yeah. I sin a lot less than I did a year ago. I sin a lot, heck of a lot less than I did 10 years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's part of the process. But you don't, you don't sanctify yourself. The Holy Spirit, you make more room for the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit sanctifies you. 
We've been sanctified by the Holy Spirit is what Paul says. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we always ask for God to lead us when we need to be asking for God to fill us. And it's like the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We, yeah. all were, we are all trying to obtain the fruits of the mm, Holy Spirit. There. And whether that's patience, whether that's self-control, mm-hmm. whether that's love, whether that's kindness, um, faithfulness. But you, you will never be able to obtain those things Ooh. on your own. Ooh, yeah. The Holy Spirit has to give you those things. Yeah. And in order to receive something, you've got to put something down. Yeah. Because you can only carry so much. Oh. And I think if, if you're at the event the other night and um, you woke up the next day, you woke up Sunday morning and you're like, okay, great, that was awesome. You know, but I still have this in my ear telling me yeah. to pick this up or, or I need this or I need this relationship or I need to call this girl or I need to, you know, whatever it was. Um, we have got to put some stuff down, yeah. not on our own. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to give us this strength. We need to ask for it. Like, get your asking gear is what I've yeah. heard. I, to- I told somebody straight up. I pulled their phone out of their pocket. I said, get a dumb phone. Jesus said, cut off your hand. He said, pluck, off, pluck out your eye. If yeah. it causes you to sin, and we won't even get rid of our phones. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. But not everybody, phones aren't evil. You can have the Bible app on there. You can do good things. But if it is an idol, if it is an idol, idols get in the way of God's voice. When the Israelites were worshiping other idols, God would depart from them. He would take their hand off of them. And he'd give them over to the enemy because they wanted the enemy. Yeah. They were putting idols up of the enemy. You don't understand the, the God of Moloch, the Baal, all the, they all work with Satan. It's all the same, guys. Jesus said, you're for me or against me. And, and, and I, so, like, so, so the people that are having that wrestling right now, where they're not realizing those are idols that are in their life that are getting in the way of them living with God. If you got so impacted that day, Saturday, if you, if you felt the fullness of the Holy Spirit, if you even got delivered, if you got partial healing, there's still more to go for you. And the reason why you feel that r- restlessness now, you got the Monday scaries, you know, you got, you woke up and you're like, crap, I, I got to go back to work. I got this boss that hates me. I got this. And it's just like, oh, snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's just like, crap, like, what do I do now? Like, what do I do? Like, I, I just was in that perfect community. I had all the, and it's like, well, God will bring you back to that. He'll bring you back to that place. But now what you're, why you're feeling that way is it's being revealed to you how much of your life is wickedness. Yeah. Your life is wickedness, and that's why you feel that way. So you got to get rid of the wickedness. you got to abstract it. You even have wickedness within you. You convince yourself that you're a good person. You convince yourself you care about people. You convince yourself you do things out of rough. But David, King David said, Reveal, the, oh Lord, reveal to me my wicked ways. Like we don't know the wickedness of our own heart. God has to reveal the wickedness of our own heart because Satan has been sent to earth and he deceives the whole earth, Revelations 12, 9. So he's deceived you into thinking that what you're doing is okay, but it's not okay. And so right now, that restlessness is not anxiety. That's not anxiety. That is conviction. Conviction is a gift from God. Because it allows us to extract the things out of our lives that are not from him so that we can be closer to him. Because every single human being on this earth craves to be close to God. Because we are created in the garden to walk with God. Adam and Eve walked with God, but then our sin separates us from God. And so we all have this yearning to get back to God. We want the Holy Spirit. And he gave it, he's so good to us, he sent his son to die on the cross. And three days later, rose again, the veil was torn. Now we have access to the Holy Spirit. We can accept Jesus. We can accept him and say he is our Lord and Savior. And the Holy Spirit can come into us. And the Holy Spirit can fill us up. And now I can walk with God every day the same way Adam did in the garden. The only difference is is I'm in a fallen, broken world in a broken body. And so there's different pulls and I'll fall in and I can fall into things. Whereas Adam couldn't fall into anything except eating of the tree, which he did. And that's why we're here. And the same way you have that same choice every day, you can eat of the tree or you can walk with God in the garden. The choice is yours. So, so that restlessness that you're feeling today, it's God saying, choose me. Yeah. It's him walking through the garden, 
looking for Adam after he ate the fruit, and he said, where are you? That's what he said. He didn't say, Adam, you dumb idiot. Why'd you do that? You did the one thing I told you not to do. Now you've ruined the whole earth. Now ever, you know, you're going to have millions of people. He said, where are you? Who lied to you? Not even, why'd you do it? He, he just wanted Adam to repent. I know I could get into a whole theological debate here. It, what if Adam would have repented? Would they got to excommunicate? Like, what would have happened? I don't know. We don't know. It's not in the Bible. The Bible's not exhaustive. It doesn't tell us what would have happened if Adam would have repented. But I can tell you what will happen if you repent. God will take you back. Because that's what he showed. He always took the Israelites back. No matter how deep and dark they got down the path. They were sacrificing their children. They were sacrificing their children. On the, do you know what the idol of Moloch was? The idol of Moloch, Moloch was a statue. I think he had a bull head and he had these arms laid out like this. And they would torch the arms. They would heat up the arms. And they would lay their children on it. They would take their own kid and they would lay it on those arms. And God still took those people back. So there's nothing that you could have done. There's nothing you have done that will not allow him to bring you back. You just need deliverance from the enemy. The same way the Israelites were in bondage to the enemies of Babylon, of Syria, of even Rome. The same way they were in bondage, and then when they repented and cried out to God and turned away and changed their ways, because repentance is a churchy word, all it means is you turn away from wrong. You just turn away. You say, oh, that's wrong. I'm not doing that. I'm not hanging out with those people anymore. I'm not vaping anymore. I'm not doing weed anymore. I'm not watching porn anymore. I'm turning away from it. You yeah. turn away from it, and he'll snatch you out from where you are, and he will put you in safety. He will put you on. He did that for this man's family. He did that for my family. So we're just walking testaments of that, and that's the goodness of God, guys, and that's the gospel. The gospel isn't raising your hand when you're 13, accepting Jesus in your heart, and getting an insurance card that tells you you get to go to heaven. The gospel is the kingdom is at hand. Jesus died for our sins so that we don't have to live in sin anymore. We can live with the Holy Spirit, and we can choose to not partake in sin anymore, and we can have perfect unity and a perfect re relationship with Christ, which is what me and Shane are both experiencing, which is why we're sitting here on a day that we could just be out, you know, this is like, we're not getting any money from this. No. Yeah. I'm glad I get to be here with you. It's fun, but I'm not, I'm not trying to make myself look good here. I didn't yeah. think like, Hey, if I got on YouTube today, maybe I can gain a couple more followers. I thought, man, there's some people out there hurting. And this man, this is a man of God. I need to get on the mic with him and we need to share our hearts to people so that they can understand. Yeah. Cause we just want you to understand the world. The world says Everything that you just said is completely different from what we receive in the world. It's completely different what, than what we receive in a lot of churches, too. You said it doesn't matter what you do. God will always take you back. You said it doesn't matter how nasty or ugly some of the things that you've done in your life are. God will always receive you if you repent for those things, if you turn away from those things and say, God forgive me, mm. forgive me of this, fill in the blank, you know, and, and, and he'll receive you. Mm -hmm. But we've got churches out there that are closing their doors to some people. Yep. Or we've got people out there, dude, don't get me on the whole social media thing. Oh like the, the first time somebody does something wrong, oh, it's like it, throw them in the middle of the road and let's stone them to death. But Jeez. let's not talk about the issues that you've got, Jeez. you know, behind closed doors. And, um, I take a lot of like non-believers or people that uh that aren't, you know, they they don't want anything to do with Christianity because what they've experienced with people. Mm. And that's the biggest issue, man. And um that's one thing I've tried to hold on to is I have made my share of mistakes in my life. So when it comes to other people making mistakes, I will never hold that against somebody, man, mm. no matter how ugly that looks. Mm. And sometimes my flesh will come into play dependent on how ugly yeah. that looks, and I might not want to, but we can't because that's not what God does. And if I laid out there, if I if Jeez. I put it all on paper and, and showed the, the camera right now all of the mistakes that Ooh, I've made in yeah. my life, I would look just like the people that are Ooh. watching in on this right yeah. now. You know, yeah, and um, probably worse than some people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got but quite the, the rap sheet. But the Holy Spirit's for me, bro. God's for me. God's for my family, and um, I I want this for my kids. Yep. I want this for my two sons and my daughter. You know what's different about you, though, man? 
you didn't have pride, bro. You maybe had struggled with pride in your past or whatever, but whenever you came to church for the first time and yeah, you didn't receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you got rid of your pride though. You were willing to learn. You were willing to be corrected. You were willing to call me up and say, hey, I don't know everything. Can you help me? Yeah. And there's a lot of people out here that they're not experiencing the freedom because they got too much pride. And the reason why Monday came and you're not getting delivered is because what should have happened is you could you could have left that event or you could have left the church service. Wherever you went in the church, I know we're talking about our event because that was our experience this weekend, but it's, the Spirit moves in mysterious ways. And what a lot of times he does is he'll move across the nation. He'll have a certain thing that he's trying to teach the nation at that time or the world at that time. And so I just have a feeling. It's not even a feeling because feelings can... Feeling can read you, lead you wrong. Mm. I have a knowing in my spirit that there is a move of God that happened this weekend. So wherever you were, we're talking about the event, but I'm talking about what you experienced. And now you're wondering, what do I do with that? What do I do with that? And then maybe you try to talk to some people and they're like, ooh, that's a little weird. <laughs> that's a little weird. The things you're telling me, the things that, oh, you got, you got overwhelmed. You cried in church. Oh, you... Oh, people were trying to cast demons out of you? Oh, people were telling you, oh, that's a little weird. Praying for healing. That's a little weird. Yeah. The people that are telling you that's weird, that's a spirit of religion, and it's demonic, and it's against the move of God. Because the move of God comes and heals and makes you whole and sets you free from demons. Dude, something just like, I just got a word that, there's probably a lot of church people watching yes. this too. Yes. And we're speaking to people who might not go to church, mm -hmm. but there are people up here that oh. are church oh. people that are saying, oh. yeah, the healing, the casting out of demons, being delivered, that stuff's weird. Yet these are the same people that believe in a virgin birth and resurrecting from a oh death. My. That's not weird. Oh my. It's all weird. You know what I mean? But if we try to... Uh, if we tried to conceptualize it or 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 think through this thing with our human minds, dude, our God is so powerful, we can't think through all of this with our human minds. It'd be impossible. Mm. If we could actually fathom who our God was, what our God can do with our human minds, then our God's not powerful enough. And that's why when people experience God's presence, they literally fall on their hands and knees and face because there's just too much you can't even comprehend. Yeah. So if you're trying to comprehend it all, if you're using books to try to understand it all, if you're saying if it's not in the Bible, then I don't believe it. If you're saying it, if you can't show me a scripture that says there's a spirit of rejection and it's within you and it's causing you to do these things and I'm not going to believe it, then I'm sorry. Then you're just going to stay in bondage. And that's the same way that the Pharisees and Sadducees stayed in bondage because they could have received the freedom that Jesus offered, they but they didn't it. want it. They murdered it. Yeah. Some of you are murdering us in your minds right now. <laughs> yeah. Is that okay for me to say? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's some, there's some people that if we were back in the Old Testament, if, or we, if we were back in um, early church times or whatever, and we were saying this in the temple, they would have taken us out back and they would have stoned us. They would have whipped us. They would have, they would have put us on a cross. Dude, if Jesus walked the streets in 2023 he would have been killed a lot he would have been persecuted a lot quicker well no than he every church back would then. have canceled him oh for sure every church would have canceled him because yep. we don't murder people anymore we don't take them out on the street but what we do is we claim that they're a false teacher yep and we look for one wrong that they did and they looked for one wrong that jesus did they said oh his disciples eat on the sabbath his, his disciples eat on the Sabbath, so that disqualifies him from teaching to us. So we're not going to receive anything that he says. Yep. And so now what we do is we look for these guys. We look for these guys that are full of the Holy Spirit, men of God, preaching the gospel, dedicated their life to the gospel, dedicated their family to the gospel, set apart. They're set apart from the world. They're not of the world, so they look different. They look weird. And then we look for one thing that they say wrong, and then we put them on blast on YouTube. Canceled. And we take a clip. And we say, no, I don't listen to that guy because he did this. But we have no idea what their fruit looks like. And I'll tell you what my fruit looks like. I'll tell you what Shane's fruit looks like. I'll tell you what Brian's fruit looks like. It looks like nothing matters. Nothing matters except what Jesus wants to do through me and for me. Nothing matters. My whole day is tailored to what is God going to use me for today? 
What does he have for me? I say, he and I. He and I is the Hebrew word for, here am I. Here am I, Adonai. He and I, Adonai. Here I am, Lord. What do you have for me today? What do you have for me today? And some people think that they're saying that. My professor wrote this really good book. I gave it to you. It's called God Things. Yeah. It's called God Things. And what it is, it's the difference between a God thing and a good thing. A spiritual thing and a carnal thing. And a lot of people are doing carnal things or doing good things, and they're label, labeling them as God things. And so that's how you're able to argue with, hey, I actually, no, I'm, I am a Christian. I am, a, I am full of the Holy Spirit because I'm doing all these good things. I got this ministry. I'm serving. I'm praying. I'm doing these things. But it's not about what you do. Yeah, it's not pride. about what you do. That's that pride. It's not about what you do. If you think about what you do, the Pharisees had a whole list of what they did, man. Yep. They had a whole. They added rules. I was caught up in it. Tell me about it. Ministry. Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, when when we were doing full time ministry, you get so caught up in the things that you do and the things that you accomplish yeah. that you begin to lose sight on letting the Spirit guide you and wow. fill you in those things. Yeah. Because your mind's so set on I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this, but. What if those aren't things that God even wants you to do? And um, I got to a point where I was I was striving for that so much, not knowing. It's like you said. Wow. The enemy's plan is to deceive us. We don't Ooh. understand we're being deceived. I was being deceived. Ooh. We were being deceived. Yeah. And, and it led to a place of uh, burnout. It yeah. led to a place of shame. It led yeah. to a place of bad decisions and mistakes. Man. And, uh, and... Because that opened the door for the enemy, oh, yeah. and so it opened up more. Yeah. So that's why, dude, oh my goodness, you just opened something up, bro, because it was almost worse for you to go to church and receive that pride and be in service because then your life almost even got worse oh, in a dude. way because what happened is the same thing Jesus said to the Pharisees. You cast out one demon, so maybe you had the demon Maybe you, maybe you had a spirit, an unclean spirit, because I know people don't like when I say demons and whatnot. So I'll say, maybe before you were in church, you had an unclean spirit of um, what's something you really dealt with, like you were doing drugs, so like of addiction yeah. or something. So you got free of that because you like repented of it. And you're like, hey, I don't want to be addicted anymore. You go to church, and then you're feeling, and then but then you get pride. Then you yeah. get spiritual pride. Yeah, look what we did. Look what we did. Yep. And then that opens a door because pride opens the door to all sorts of evil. So then that opens the door, and then you even, and then, and then other things started to come with that. Yeah. Religiosity, like, uh, you know, maybe anger, maybe, maybe these things that you didn't have before, they start to rise up. And you keep doing the good things, you keep getting more prideful, and then more things. And this is, guys, what I'm talking about right now is what Jesus told the Pharisees. This is what he said. This is what he told the Pharisees. He said, you cast one demon out, it goes along dry land, it finds nowhere to rest ahead, it comes back, it finds the house empty and swept like you the look house. good you look yeah you look squeaky clean oh, yeah. everybody in church loved you you look good fresh fade yeah bro shoes. you look good <laughs> yeah preacher and sneakers baby <laughs> but you weren't full of the holy spirit that's right did you not did right no absolutely. you weren't full of the holy spirit absolutely so then seven more even more wicked and evil come back with that one and then they enter you yet you've got to keep on this persona so that, then that you're, you're still good. And then that just opens up the door for oh my goodness, for more bro. to come in because you're not dealing with it. Because mm. you, you know? can't. There's no room. No. So there's some people in ministry right now listening to this, and they've convinced themselves that they're walking with God, that they have the Holy Spirit, but yet they're feeling all this angst, depression, addictions, anxieties. Dude, there was some – there was – there were some individuals at the event the other night that at the end of the event, it was like, that was a great event. Thank you. You know, we're, we got to go. And it's like, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you've been doing this for 50 years, 30 years, or one year. You've got something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've got, you've got a handful of things at minimum. And for you to not receive in an environment like that, for you not to be impacted in an environment like that just goes to show 
that there is a level of callous and pride oh my. that's hard to break through in the church, or, or I say in the church world, but in the in the churched people. Oh my, that is a word, bro. That is a word, and I know what people are thinking right now. If you if if you are succumbed, if you are living in religion, you're thinking, well, what about you guys? What about you guys? Why are you guys able to go out there and do that? Let me tell you. Let me tell you what happened to me. Leading up to the event, I was planning on, hey, chilling, meeting people, and then being able to go out on stage, give my message, and then all hell broke loose, or I should say all heaven broke loose because it was actually what God's will was. But to me, it gave me a bunch of angst because now I'm yeah. having to problem solve. Now I'm having to tell Shane what he's going to say before he goes out. Now I all of a sudden I had to become like a leader for this event, and I had to stand on tables and tell everybody, hey, please don't leave. We're going to do things. I was praying, and it was all like on a moment's notice. So then I, I opened a door. Yeah. I opened a door for the enemy. I opened it I, like right here. I just went, here go, enemy. What do do right now? What's Brennan got to do? Well, oh, I was carnal. I was like solving problems. I was doing these things. I was doing, yeah. And then next thing I know, I'm starting to feel anxiety. And then next thing I know, I have like crippling anxiety about what I'm going to preach. Like crippling. Like I'm like, Shane, had to, I had to have him pray for me like three times. I'm like, bro. And then, but then know what I did? Right before I had to preach, I had a couple minutes, and I said, I went on a walk. And I went on a walk. And I went on a walk with Jesus. And I went down. And where the event was was the old soccer fields that I used to play. And I went and I stood in that middle of the soccer field. And God just overwhelmed me. And he gave me a vision. He took me back to when I was 11 years old and I was on that soccer field. And I was a little insecure boy. And I had just got a haircut, and I was so embarrassed about my haircut that I was wearing a beanie. I was wearing a beanie because I was embarrassed because my haircut was a little shorter than I wanted it, and so it exposed more of my forehead. And some people used to make fun of me about my forehead. And I was just, I remember just being overwhelmed with that feeling that I used to have of the angst that I would get when I would go in to social environments of just wondering what people were thinking about me and how they were judging me and how they're perceiving me. And he took me back to that place and I felt it so heavily. And then he said, I took you out of this place. Yeah. I took you out of this place. I took you out of that flood and I put you on dry ground. And I filled you with the confidence and the courage. I'm the reason why you have that. I'm the reason why you're going to be able to preach to these people. I'm the reason why I'm going to send you to the nations and you're going to preach the gospel. I'm the reason it's nothing that you did because you would still be that scared little boy if I didn't come. Yeah. And yeah, you might have got tough. You might have got hard. You might have got some tattoos. You might have gone to rescue summer school. You might have looked better to the world. You might have looked stronger. You might have had a chiseled six pack. You might have done all these chiseled. things. You might have done all these things to gain the approval of man. And so now people aren't judging you the same way that, but that little boy, you would still be that little boy. Yeah. You would still be that little boy. And right now it's flaring up in you. It's flaring up in you. You're wondering what people are going to think about you because you're not tuned into my spirit. You're not tuned into my spirit, Brennan. You're listening to what Brennan thinks. You're solving the problems that Brennan would solve. You're doing the thing. Get back to me. Get back to me right now. And I was just so grateful. I was so grateful because gratitude. My boy, Pastor John Termini, he preached a sermon the other day and he, and he talked about how, how gratitude is the lubricant of the brain is what scientists are finding. The lubricant of the brain. It allows your brain to work. But when you get into resentment and pride and anxiety and you start to harbor that in your mind, then all sorts of other evils come. Yeah. But if you have gratitude to God, you're grateful. God, thank you. Thank you for bringing me here. Thank you for bringing me out. Yeah, life sucks. Yeah, I've had some bad things happen in my life. We all do. We all. Shane's been through some stuff. He's been through some stuff in his childhood. I've been through some stuff in my childhood. Like, I have stuff that people will never know. They'll never know because they're just, all they know is what they see right now. That's all they know. And when you don't walk through those things and heal them properly and work through those things like we did the other night, they trickle into your adulthood. Yeah. They trickle into your fatherhood. They trickle into your marriage. They trickle into how you mm, act around the people there. you work with every single day. They trickle into those relationships, man. There's nothing that has been done to us in our life or there's nothing that we've been through in our life that doesn't have an impact on us at a later date if we don't deal with it like we need to. Wow. And that's 
through the Holy Spirit. That's through waking up. And I know a lot of people like practical. That's through waking up every morning and saying, God, I can't do this mm. on my own today. Practical. I need you. I can't. I can't. There's no way that I can walk into work today, be around these people that I'm around every day that cause me to act like this, talk like this, feel like this, unless I have your strength, unless I have your wisdom. So every single morning when I wake up, I wake up at 430, and and when I'm driving in, I no radio, no Mm. music, no nothing. It's my quiet time. And I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that because I realize that if I don't do that, my day is all about what I can do, what, what I'm doing wrong. Like, I need that time. We live in such a pragmatic culture, bro. It's so, it's so problem-solving. It's so result-oriented. It's so goal-oriented. Set goals for your life. Set these practices in your life so you can achieve what you want. Set a five-year plan. Set, set, do this with your finances so then in, in 10 years you can be here. Guess what? That's not the way of the Spirit. That's not how the Spirit works. So the, all the people that message me and they tell me, hey, I need your, I need your sermons. I need, I need uh, your messages on you to be more practical. I need them to be more practical. Mm. That's from the enemy. Practicality is from the enemy because the Spirit isn't practical. The Spirit doesn't fit into the box that we want to fit in. Yeah. So I can't give you anything practical. All I can tell you is you need more Jesus in your life. And I know that sounds crazy and religious because I used to hear people, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. You got a bumper sticker. It's all about Jesus. And then I'm like, but look at you. I don't understand. I don't, they like, I, you I still just, mean. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't, like, I didn't get it. It didn't make sense to me. Because it doesn't make sense, guys. It doesn't make sense. What Shane's talking about is that's what works for him. He gets, but guess what? It works for me too. I get up, first thing I do is spend time with the Lord. First thing I think about is the Lord. If I have something that trickles in my mind that's not of the Lord, I say, I take that thought captive, I throw it away, and I say, meditate on my word day and night, so I think about his word. What is word? What's his word? Well, his word is this. One, this is great. Read it every day. But also his word is what he spoke to you. What did he tell you to do? What did he tell you to do, Shane? What did he tell you to do? He told you, take care of your family. Get your family in order. Not that you have to do it, but no. that he's going to show you how to do it. That's another pressure that we live by. I actually referenced this at the event the other day. Um, there's an author from, from Richmond. His name's Justin Early. And, uh, and this spoke to me, man, because I've seen myself fall into this time after time, yeah. and it leaves you stuck yeah. as a father. And uh, you're not required as fathers, you're not required as men to put your family on your back mm. and climb this steep hill yeah to get them where you need to get them because we've got to lead our family, whether it's financially or when we're around the dinner table having conversation, good conversations Mm -hmm. or whatever it may be, we're asked to lead. So we want to throw our family on our back and climb this mountain when God is saying, no, 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 no. You reach out your hand, take my hand and let me bring you along with your family. The dude, the Christian life is not a mountain. It's not a mountain. That's a lie. A mountain that you're dredging up. Yeah. You're climbing. I got I got to get to the top. I got I got to get there. I got to throw everything even if you don't have a family if it's I got to throw myself on my back. I got to carry myself up there. Yeah. You know what it's and like? That's where a lot of people yeah. are after last after yeah. Saturday. Yeah. I've got to put myself on my back. I've got to quit doing this. I got to stop doing this. I keep doing the things that I don't want to do. Mm, like yet I thing. don't do the things that I need to do. Yeah. That's what Paul said and people read that and they think that 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 Paul they I'm so glad you brought that up. That's Romans 6, I believe. They think that Paul is talking about how he actually feels. That's not how Paul felt. That's not how Paul felt. That's why you have to read the whole book of Romans. It was a letter. It's meant to be read in its entirety because if you continue on, he talks about life in the spirit. There, he was talking about life under the law. And we're not called to the law. So if you live that way, then you're still bound to the law. Life of the Spirit, it's not a mountain, it's a cliff, a sheer cliff. There's no way you can get up it. It's, impo- it's literally impossible to get up it. And the Holy Spirit is a dove or the wind, mm. and he takes you up it. Yeah. He takes you up it. He takes you out of the place that you are, and he plucks you up, and he takes you up it. You can't climb out of anything on your own. If you climb out of anything on your own, all you're doing is numbing it. 
You're like when David was playing the harp for Saul. Saul has tormenting demons. He he called in. Uh, he said, "Hey, I need a harp player because they they numb my demons." And so then what David would do is he'd come in and he'd play the harp for Saul, and the demons would leave. And then as soon as the harp was gone, they'd come back. And so all they're doing is they're coming back in a different way to you. Yeah, maybe you can get yourself off heroin. Maybe you can. Here's the thing I've been hearing lately too is like people are doing like hallucinogenics, and they're saying it changed their life. It changed their life. All it did was it gave you some different demons. Yeah. And so now those ones aren't as, they're not, they don't appear to be as ugly as the old ones because it's not heroin. It's not going to kill you. You're no longer doing heroin. But now you got to do shrooms all the time. Yeah. Look at the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> now you got it. Now, now you got to do yoga every single day or you don't feel right. Now you got to wake up every morning. You got to meditate. Now, and then you're getting dreams at night that you don't like. You're getting nightmares. You're getting all these things. And I'm talking to people that are of the world. There's two camps watching this. There's people that were at the event that were of the world, and there's people that were at the event that were of religion. And so that's my message for the people that were of the world, the people that are of religion. If you want to change, ooh, you need to get away. You need to cut off the world because you're, t- you're tied to so much. It's hard to get out of religion. It's harder to get out of religion than it's harder to get out of the world. I'll tell you that. And that's why the Pharisees and Sadducees. So if you really want to change, if you're bound to religion and you really want to change, it is going to be a grind, but he will get you through it because there's a lot of, there's a lot of ideas of God that you have built up that he's going to have to tear down. Dude, He's going to have to trim you. Speaking of the religion side, man, I overheard somebody talking the other day. I was a part of the conversation. I wasn't in the conversation. And they said that they were having a meeting at their church and it was, um, they were like, we got we to gotta cut back on funding the school. We got to stop giving money to the school. We got to stop supporting the school. And someone stood up in the meeting and said, what do you mean? We have a million dollars in savings. Why are we going to stop giving to the school? And that right there, that bondage of, of security oh. <laughs> in the church, man. Yeah. In the church. Wow. What do you mean you have a million dollars in savings? <laughs> And you got to cut back funding to the people that need it. Oh my goodness, bro. Because we got to protect ourselves because we got to be here so that we can save. He said, Give me this day my daily bread. You don't need to save nothing. No, the what scripture says is if you have a million dollars in savings and you give, then you might have five million dollars yeah. in savings or ten million dollars in savings. But the thing is, people. But have, it's not about that. But people have convinced themselves that what they're doing is good. But they're only doing it because of what they have. They're only giving $100 here and there. They're only supporting this ministry with this because they have excess. He wants you to have nothing. And sometimes he needs to take you through a season of having nothing so he can teach you how to rely on his Holy Spirit with everything. And then he might build you back up. Yeah. But if you're in that place where you have everything, you might have to give away everything. You might have to lose everything or else he's going to take it from you at some point. Yeah, you can't you can't grasp onto it, man. No. You can't hold it tightly. So release. If you have religion, release it. Release it in Jesus' name. Release it. Just let it go. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be bound to it. You want freedom. So I don't get why you're fighting. Why are you fighting it? Why are you resisting the Holy Spirit? Don't resist the Holy Spirit anymore. Don't resist the move of God like the Pharisees did. That's what, do you know what Stephen said when he was about to be stoned by the Pharisees and Sadducees? This is what got them so mad. He said, you have always resisted the moves of the Holy Spirit. You have always been against the moves of God. You have always been against the Holy Spirit. You and all the past generations, you Pharisees. And it says the yeast of the Pharisees gets passed down through generation. So there's people that have the same spirit that the Pharisees and Sadducees had that are listening to this right now. And you can, but you can be changed. Don't be, the reason why I cry out like this, don't be like the Pharisees and Sadducees. You have a choice. The veil is torn. You have access to the Holy Spirit. Just accept it. Accept that you don't know everything. You don't know everything. You haven't seen everything. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I've seen people like you, Brennan. I've seen people like you, Shane. And I know where that leads. That leads down a path where you're doing a bunch of weird stuff and swirling snakes around. And then next thing you know, you're on the new. No, no. That, so you're going to let that keep you from the Holy Spirit? You're going to let your fear of what it could turn in. No, that's not how he works. When you walk with him, it's different. Those, that was men that led it that way. It wasn't the Holy Spirit that led it that way. Some point in the road, they either lost it or they never had it. Yeah. But don't let that keep you from accessing it. Yeah. 
close this out with something good. What do you got to say? And then we'll pray. Yeah. So. There can be times in your life where you are heavily impacted, like a lot of us were this past Saturday. And when you are, don't feel like you've got to take what you received and do it on your own because you can't. We can't walk this journey alone. That's what this whole premise is about. It's about releasing that pride, releasing that shame that's keeping you bound, and and reach out. Reach out, reach out to God for one. Reach out to the Holy Spirit for one. Ask God what you need to do in your life to make those changes because we're going to do the same thing. Yeah, we're going to take what happened Saturday night, and, and we already started doing it yesterday. Oh, I got some changes to make. Yeah, I do too. I got some changes to make. So, so one... Create that relationship with Christ. Create that relationship with the Holy Spirit. And then, two, find community. Yeah. You've got to find community. You've got to find people who are also of the same mindset. Not, not the mindset of religion, but the mindset of wanting to n- know they're broken and want to grow and be better and be fulfilled and whole and, and, and do everything you can to lean in on the Holy Spirit and lean in on that community to keep you... To keep you going. Yeah, dude, you know something he revealed to me at this event because I, I stepped into a, um, another level of my calling. I stepped into my, another level of my calling. Yeah. I, hadn't, I hadn't been preaching much. I maybe I, I, I really only have taught. I haven't really ever even preached. Yeah. And so I preached for the first time yesterday, like real preach. Like, was, but, it was wild, dude. Yeah, because before that, it's always been teaching environments where I'm kind of, I got to be like luxury and whatnot, but I was allowed to roam. Boy. I was allowed to. I was Boy. allowed to pace. Yeah, you, and uh, it, the the room. It was evident, man. There there was a lot of people that spoke, but I think because of your preparation leading up to this event, not your preparation on what do I need to say, what do I need to write, what do they need to hear, but your preparation of living it, yeah. praying for it, praying for God to use you, praying for God to use yeah. your words. I think that form of preparation. Yeah led to I said it last night I think we could have dropped a cotton ball in that pavilion and heard it hit the ground because everybody was like this everybody was like this leaning in and um it's because there was a word from God that yes. everybody needed yes. to hear that's what it was and that's that's why so that's my call right my yeah. call is to deliver a word from God to people and so he made that more relevant or, or more apparent to me on Saturday and but you know what he revealed to me Mar- I, uh, there are some things that I had been doing in my life because I, I kind of don't want, I kind of still didn't want that call because I've always been so nervous to preach. I've always been, dude, I've been crippled by anxiety. I get my words wrong. I slur speech. I, I do, I say things wrong. I say revelations instead of revelation. I do. And so I'm like, God, I, I can't do that. You can't use me in that way. But in the, but in this other way over here, I feel a little safer. And so I started kind of navigating towards like the way that I felt safe. Yeah. And you know, I'll just tell you guys what it was. This is what it was. No, I'm not going to tell you what it was because I'm going to wait for it to come to pass. I was studying something. I was dedicating my life to something because it was, and it was still a ministry thing and it was still a way that God would use me, but it wasn't the way. Yeah. It wasn't the way that he had planned for me. It still was a good thing. It still was even a God thing, but it wasn't the God thing that he had for me. And I... The reason why I was choosing it is because it, one of the reasons it was easier to explain to people. It was easier to explain to people that, hey, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be this. I'm going to have this title because it had a title. It had a title. And so it was easier to explain it. But doing what I'm doing, it's hard. <laughs> Dude, that's hard to explain. It's hard to, yeah. it's hard to explain what I'm doing. And it makes conversations awkward. I went to a wedding the other day. The guy asked me what I did. I said, I got this ministry, Shepherding Wellness. He said, what's Shepherding Wellness? I'm like, oh, well, we, you know, we used to do this and that. And then, like, next thing I know, I'm, like, telling him I prophesied to pastors. And, and he's like, he, all of a sudden, he's just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know how to not be authentic. I'm sorry. I don't know how to play salesman. Like, I'm sorry. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that way. That's that, what he was hoping you'd say. You're a salesman. <laughs> Well, he was in tech, you know, so he's like, oh, yeah, I'm in tech, and I do this and that, and it was, like, real easy for him. And I'm like, oh, cool. He's like, what do you do? And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. 
You got have, time? <laughs> but you know what's easier? No, it would have been way easier to say, yeah, I'm a college professor. Yeah. That's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to be something that has a label. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm a pastor of the church. You know. Yeah, yeah I do that. But sometimes God's going to call you into something unorthodox because he's unorthodox. Look at John the Baptist. Look at John the Baptist out there eating locusts and honey. Yeah. Like we act like, dude, you, you people that talk about this so much and are so bound to this, I know this. I know this. I love this. I, I consume it every day. I love it. But you're in idolatry to this because yeah. you're saying it only can be this. But he used John the Baptist in the wilderness, and he wants to use your voice. He wants to use your voice in that way. But you got to be willing to go to that wilderness place. you got to be willing to get trimmed. you got to be willing to get pruned. you got to be willing to tell the people around you, hey, I was wrong. i got to get away for a little bit. I, yeah. dude, I was messing up, dude. I was, before I went through my wilderness season, I was manipulating. But it all looked really good, and it felt good. Yeah. But it wasn't the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't what we're experiencing now. Yeah. Because there were still pieces of me that I was worried about a little bit what people were thinking. Or I still had a little bit of pride in this area. And so just that little bit, Satan just wants to get you one degree off. He's not trying to get you to do a full 180. But that one degree today, one degree tomorrow, one degree, eventually it goes that way. But he's not going to say, he doesn't tell a pastor, hey, let's go do heroin and go to the strip club today. That's yeah. not, that doesn't happen. What happens, Shane? What happens? Oh, it starts with little things. Yeah. Man. It starts with uh, just lust yeah it starts with lusting over a movie or lusting over your discover page on instagram and then it turns to porn addiction and then porn addiction turns to an affair and then yep. affair you know it, it's and, a it's a ripple effect and that's lust is always the easy one and i know there's some people yeah but i don't deal with lust i don't deal with lust you know what i mean i know there's some people that but pride listen you know how pride comes in oh yeah that compliment did feel pretty good man whew. yeah that's I kind of like that. Yeah. And then you start doing that a little bit more. Oh, when I do this ministry, people really recognize me. Yeah. They really recognize me when I do that ministry. That feels good. They applaud me. Yep. Yeah. The applause of man are dangerous. And some of your ministries are built on the applause of man. Yep. So were Saul's. Look what happened to him. He ended up getting beheaded with his freaking body put up on the inside the temple of these foreign gods. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the plot of man is dangerous. So if you're doing your ministry for the plot of man, get back to God. Get back to your first love. Get back to Jesus. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Holy Spirit, come. Fill these people. Fill them up. Fill them up with your love. Fill them up with your peace. Fill them up with your joy, God. Any, any people that are just struggling with religion right now, God, we just bind it in the name of Jesus. We say it's not welcome here. It can't be here anymore. It can't be here anymore. Get rid of it, guys. Get rid of that pride. Give it over to Jesus right now. He wants to remove it. He wants to set you free. He wants to allow you to live the spiritual life, but you're choosing to not live it. So let him take over. Let him, let him take over right now even. I'm just feeling it so heavily. He wants to take over you. You're resisting. You're resisting. You're resisting. You're scared. You're scared. You're scared. I bind the spirit of fear. Fear. No more. No more fear. No more operating on fear. And the, for my other peeps that are not in religion, that aren't bound to religion, Pray for them, Shane. Pray for them. God, I pray right now that those listening in right now, those that were impacted Saturday night at the event who aren't churched, who didn't grow up in church or who did but were scarred and turned away from it, God, or turned away from you, God, I pray that, that, I pray that your Holy Spirit fills them in a way, God, where there will be an activation. Yes in their lives, an yeah. activation in their hearts, yeah. God, where they start to sense that conviction, not that angst, but that conviction where, man, I really do need to make some changes in my life. I really do need to put this down or put that down or I need to stop hanging out with these mm, people, yeah. these friends, yep. these friends, quote unquote. So God, right now, I just pray that there's an activation in their life. I pray for boldness in their life right now, God, that there will be um, a boldness that, that allows them to stand firm in where you're calling them to be because you've put purpose on every single one of our lives that walk this earth. Yet yeah. a lot of us just don't know that, yeah. God. So I just pray that there's a boldness that allows them to stand firm in making these decisions, but that they lean on you, God, because there's no way that we can be activated and do it on our own. We've all tried. A lot of people listening in right now have tried. So that's what I pray for, God, is activation and boldness. And God, I just pray that there's community that wrap their arms around these people, that, that yeah. wraps their arms around these yep. individuals, that there will be people that come into their life. Yep. And they sit there and they say, 
you know what? God had to have sent this person. Yeah. God had to have placed this person yep. in my life at this time, God. So no. place these people, God. Yeah. Place these people in the lives of those listening in right now that need them most. Place those people in our lives, God. Yeah. Continue to place mentors yeah. and people in our life that are going to be able to walk us along and assist us in being uh, the men that you've called us to be, being the husbands you've called us to be, the fathers you've called us to be, God, in our, in our, in our field of work, God. Just continue to provide the support system. Yeah. We know that your Holy Spirit's going to fill us. We know that your Holy Spirit is with us on a daily basis, yeah. but teach us how to utilize that yeah. help. Teach us how to utilize that support, God, so we can move forward in your calling. God, we're so thankful for what you're doing for every single individual listening in yep. right now, for mm-hmm. what you did the Touch other him. night at the event, God. Just continue to fill us, Touch Lord. Him. Let us humble ourselves. Let us Touch drop him. our pride. Let us stand at your feet and actually kneel at your feet, God, and say, take us, use us, do what you need to do with us so we can have an impact on our families and, and beyond, God. May these changes echo into eternity for our generations to come, for our family trees. Yeah. We're thankful that you're using yeah. us, God, because we don't deserve it. Yep. We love you. We trust you. Even if we don't believe that yet, we love you. We trust you. And it's your name we pray, God. In Jesus' Amen. name, break the chains. Amen. Let's go. Good. Sweet, guys. Thanks so much for joining in. We're going to hop out of here because our camera's about to die. But um, love all you guys. Hey, lift me and Shane up in prayer for yeah, you. Know, dude, we'd appreciate prayer because we got some, um, God laid some heavy things on our hearts this week that we got to do, that we got, we're going to have to do them because he told us we got to do them. We got to listen to the word of God. Yeah. And when he speaks to you, you got to see it out. So we have some things, but there's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some attacks because they're big things. They're big things. They're big things for the kingdom, not grand you know, schemes. But they're big things for the kingdom that are going to have an impact. And so the enemy will be against us. And so pray for us, for spiritual protection for us and our family, and for um, steadfastness, steadfast hope, steadfast faith that we can push through and be in unity and, and see uh, see these things come to fruition that God wants to have. So you got anything else to say? No, nah, man. All right. I'm Love glad. you all. Appreciate you. Hey, it was a pleasure having Shane, right? Come on. Drop something in the chat if you like having Shane Hawaii. on here. Once in uh, Missouri. <laughs> Drop him in the chat if you want to see Shane come on here all the time and uh, just move to Hawaii and just live with us. And like, oh. we'll just shoot podcasts every day. Yeah. In yeah. Jesus' name. Amen.